Let's talk about igneous texture in this next part of the lecture and focus on each of the, the rocks and their texture a little bit and think about the textures that can result from different magmatic processes, different eruptive styles. Here's your vocabulary. Here's a good list of things to copy down. We've got phaneritic rocks. That's our term for coarse grained. And if we see that observation, we interpret that they must have formed intrusively. In contrast, we have aphanitic rocks. Those are fine grained. That's the observation. And the interpretation is that they formed extrusively on Earth's exterior as erupted by a volcano. And that is really the, the overall major classification. And then these other ones are details, some of which we can add to other things. So porphyritic rocks are those that are part coarse, part fine grains. So maybe they're a mixture of some crystals we can see and some we can't. A lot of those pictures of andesite we saw with the light crystals sticking through and then a couple of dark crystals, a lot of those we would call porphyritic andesite because they're part coarse and part fine grains. How do we interpret that? Well, if, if we interpret these in terms of cooling speed, what we can guess is that some of those crystals started to cool at first and they were able to cool slowly underground. So the first few crystals formed intrusively, but then that sort of slush, the mush of liquid and these solid grains all erupted at once and then extruded and then cooled quickly from there. So that's what porphyries are. They're sort of an in-between. They're both intrusive and extrusive. We saw some vesicular texture already. Those are rocks that have vesicles or bubbles representing the gas as it escaped the magma or the lava. Oftentimes these vesicular rocks are forming at Earth's surface because the pressure is low enough for the gases to escape the liquid as bubbles. So oftentimes these are associated with other extrusive rocks. They can also be associated with pyroclastic rocks, which are rocks that have been rapidly ejected into the air. And by ejecting so fast, they cool especially fast. Basalt is one that, that it's extrusive, but um, other rocks we're going to see are pyroclastic and made of vesicular texture, namely pumice. A glassy texture means that it kind of looks like a piece of glass in how it shines and the fact that you really don't see any grains in it um, because it actually has no mineral grains. It cooled so fast that it cooled into an amorphous solid. So these are still igneous rocks, but they're not made of minerals. Weird. This is obsidian as we'll see, the glassy rock that we're interested in. Now on the other end, a rock that is called pegmatitic is sort of a variation of phaneritic. It's pegmatitic because it has very large crystals, bigger than one centimeter long. And that means that it must have cooled intrusively very, very slowly. So here are your texture pictures. We've got vesicles up here. You can see the bubbles in this pumice. This is what I mean by glassy. You can see how this looks like, like sort of shards, shattered, broken glass on this piece of obsidian. And as we go from vesicular and glassy through aphanitic to porphyritic to phaneritic to pegmatitic, we're going coarser grains. And that also means deeper. So these are pyroclastic, they're the least deep. And then it goes in order of coarser to deeper, it goes that way, as you're looking at this. There are your texture terms that we've talked about. Remember, texture is the observation. Coarser is also an observation. Deeper is how we're interpreting that. Based on these physical processes that we've talked about, the fact that cooling speed is controlled by depth. So I will remind you that these glassy textures in obsidian here cooled so fast that the minerals don't have time to form. The liquid cools so fast that that very disorganized structure that we've seen in the liquid just freezes right where it is. 
that isn't a crystal because the atoms haven't had time to organize themselves. So where do these textures form? How do we go from those observations to an interpretation? So we have porphyries forming sort of somewhere in between, or maybe they started here and erupted. Intrusive rocks formed completely underground, cooled completely underground. And so they're going to be phaneritic. Extrusive rocks probably erupted as a liquid on the surface and flowed across, and they cooled pretty fast. And then pyroclasts are thrown into the air by the violent eruption. And so we've got pumice that we've seen, a volcanic bomb that might be made of obsidian. And then we've got volcanic ash, which is not really considered a rock yet. And why is that? Because it's not aggregated into a solid. It's dust, really sharp dust that you do not want to breathe in. So it's not a rock. But if you welded these pieces together, you would call it a tuff, and then it would be a rock. So when we are thinking about eruptions and eruptive styles, we often associate these textures with how dangerous the eruption was. Intrusive rocks are not hurting anything on the surface. Extrusive rocks formed on Earth's surface, so they probably pour, you know, suggest that there's some danger that has been posed by that eruption. But flows of lava tend to be two miles an hour or slower. It's really when you get into the pyroclastic debris like this ash that you get dangerous. And you can see from this eruption of Mount Pinatubo in the early 90s, just how dangerous those eruptions could be. Look at how huge this cloud is. This is probably miles in height. This stuff, it started out really hot. You know, it cools a little bit as it's flying through the air, but it might still be hotter than 100 degrees Celsius. And it's also made of shards, basically, of glass. And as those shards, if, if you're pelted with 100 degree shards of glass flowing down slope at hundreds of miles an hour, um, you are, you're not gonna survive. So these sorts of eruptions with pyroclastic debris are extremely dangerous if you're nearby. Let's get a little look at some of that volcanic ash, right? It's not a rock because it's not all combined to one aggregated solid. Uh, the pieces are less than two millimeters in size down to microns. So this is 30 microns. There's a thousand microns in each millimeter. So a millimeter, right, is something like that big. That's like a millimeter wide. So, you know, if this is 30 across, you could fit 10, 20, 30, 50 of these size grains in that little dot across. And look at just how jagged and sharp this thing is. These shards of silicate materials um, are going to cut up your skin, it's going to cut up your eyes, it's going to cut up your lungs if you inhale it. Not fluffy. Uh, I would not do this. It's kind of like holding fiberglass. OK, once again, I've said this plenty, but we're going to remind you that magmas are subsurface molten material, form intrusive rocks. Lava is what we call it once it meets the surface, and it forms extrusive rocks. So on this volcano, the intrusive realm would be everything that's still mostly underground. And the extrusive realm is once we get onto the surface. Now the rocks in here, right, like that form right there are probably gonna be somewhere in between. They might be porphyries or they might just be very fine grained, um, but still with visible crystals. And that's sort of an in-between. And geology is littered with those sort of in-between things, but they just don't represent much of what's going on. So we tend to be able to divide it to an intrusive and an extrusive set of conditions.